Smokey Eunuch fundamentally broke the rules of physics when he bolted a secret turbo diesel into a prototype truck in the late 1980s. He wasn't just building a powertrain, he was manufacturing a crisis for the global automotive establishment. Two dangerous mysteries have circulated through the grease-stained corners of the industry ever since that project went dark. First, how did a man with a hand grinder achieve a level of thermal efficiency that the world's largest R&D labs still claim is impossible? Second, what specific piece of evidence did the corporate auditors find in Smokey's shop that led to the immediate and total liquidation of the most efficient engine ever conceived? You are about to enter a restricted technical briefing on the engine that should have ended the gasoline era 30 years ago. We are declassifying the blueprints of a machine that turned diesel fuel into a high explosive advantage. If you believe that the history of American speed belongs to the outlaws rather than the accountants, you belong in this community. Hit the subscribe button now to join the resistance and keep this story from being buried. You must stay with us until the final disclosure to see the specific act of corporate sabotage that permanently erased Smokey's diesel revolution from the market. The Cummins Conspiracy The late 1980s was an era of profound industrial stagnation. To the executives at the Big Three, General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler, the diesel engine was a necessary evil. It was a slow, rattling, smoky anchor designed for heavy labor and nothing else. The idea of a diesel being a high-performance machine was viewed as a mechanical joke by the engineers in Detroit. However, Cummins was quietly developing the 6BT, the 5.9-liter inline-six that would eventually revolutionize the pickup market. But before the first production Ram truck ever hit the showroom floor, Smokey Eunuch had already secured an early prototype through a back-channel network of renegade industrial designers. Smokey didn't see the 6BT as a tractor engine. He saw it as a massive, untapped thermal reservoir. He understood a fundamental truth that the corporate world ignored. The primary limitation of the internal combustion engine is not friction, but wasted heat energy. In a standard engine, nearly 70% of the energy in a gallon of fuel is lost through the exhaust pipe in the radiator. Smokey's objective was a form of mechanical sabotage against the second law of thermodynamics. He wanted to capture that wasted heat and force it back into the combustion cycle. He stripped the Cummins engine down to its base iron in the best damn garage in town. He realized that the factory tolerances were designed for low-stress longevity, which he viewed as a form of engineering cowardice. He began remachining the block and the cylinder head to withstand internal pressures that would have turned a standard production engine into a pile of jagged shrapnel. He was essentially performing open-heart surgery on the future of the trucking industry. This wasn't a standard build. It was a hostile takeover of a mechanical platform that the world thought was already understood. The secret resided in a concept known as adiabatic engineering. Smokey wanted to build a heat-tight engine. He intended to insulate the combustion chamber so thoroughly that not a single BTU of energy could escape into the cooling system. This meant that every ounce of expansion force generated by the diesel fuel was directed exclusively at the piston crown. He utilized experimental ceramic coatings on the piston tops, the valve faces, and the internal surfaces of the head. This created a thermal barrier that kept the fire where it belonged in the cylinder. To the engineers in Detroit, this was high-level heresy. To Smokey, it was the only logical way to build a motor. He was building an engine that technically didn't need a radiator, and that terrified the people who sold cooling systems for a living. The physics of the fire. To understand why this turbo diesel was a threat to the global economy, you have to understand the chemistry of what Smokey called the hot vapor cycle. In a standard diesel engine, fuel is injected into the cylinder and ignites under high pressure. This process is relatively slow and creates a significant amount of soot and unburned fuel. Smokey wanted to eliminate the delay. He developed a proprietary injection system that preheated the diesel fuel to nearly 400 degrees before it ever reached the injector nozzle. By raising the fuel temperature to the edge of its flashpoint, he achieved a level of atomization that made the combustion nearly instantaneous. This preheating process was a stroke of absolute genius. He wrapped a custom heat exchanger around the exhaust manifold, using the engine's own waste heat to crack, 
the molecular structure of the diesel fuel. When that superheated vaporized fuel hit the compressed air in the cylinder, the explosion was so efficient that it produced a torque curve that looked like a vertical line on a graph. Smokey wasn't just making power, he was achieving 100% fuel burn. He was proving that the slow, dirty diesel was a corporate choice, not a mechanical reality. The second stage of the experiment involved a radical rethink of the turbocharger. In the 1980s, turbos were seen as laggy, unreliable components that only worked at high speeds. Smokey didn't use an off-the-shelf unit. He designed a variable geometry setup decades before the term became a marketing buzzword. He used a series of adjustable internal vanes that changed the speed of the turbine based on engine load. This meant he had instant boost at idle and massive, unrestricted flow at the top end. The engine didn't have turbo lag, it had a throttle response that felt like a light switch. He then moved to the final act of sabotage, the removal of the cooling system. Because of the ceramic coatings and the insulated cylinders, the engine was so thermally efficient that it didn't require a traditional water pump or a massive radiator. He reduced the cooling requirements by 60%. This saved weight and allowed for a much more aerodynamic front-end design on the test vehicle. He was essentially building a 600-horsepower engine that weighed less than a small-block V8. It was a package that threatened the billions of dollars invested in the status quo, and the industry was beginning to take notice. The Shadow Test Smokey was no fool. He knew that if he took this engine to a public track or a government testing facility, the manufacturers would have his garage locked down by morning. He chose to test the engine in the dead of night on the isolated back roads surrounding Daytona Beach. He installed the experimental insulated Cummins into a modified pickup truck that appeared to be a standard battered work vehicle. To any passing highway patrolman, it was just another farm truck. But underneath that hood was a machine that could outpull a semi-truck and outrun a European supercar. During these shadow tests, the forensic results were staggering. The truck was achieving over 40 miles per gallon while producing enough torque to physically twist the frame rails under heavy acceleration. Smokey realized he had stumbled onto the holy grail of industrial design. He had built a machine that provided high-performance speed with the fuel consumption of an economy car. He was out-engineering the multi-billion dollar research departments of the Big Three using a hand grinder and a pipe. He was proving that the technology already existed to make every truck in America twice as efficient and twice as powerful without increasing the cost. Now, I want to address the elephant in the room regarding these numbers. A diesel truck hitting 40 miles per gallon while producing 600 horsepower sounds like a mechanical fairy tale. Because Smokey conducted these tests in total secrecy, we are forced to rely on his personal shop logs and patent filings rather than independent dyno sheets. I want you to head to the comments right now and tell me where you stand. Do you believe Smokey's 40 MPG claim was a literal reality? Or was it the ultimate psychological bluff designed to rattle the Detroit engineers? Let's debate whether these figures represent a lost miracle of physics or the greatest garage legend in American history. The news of the experiment eventually leaked through the underground network of mechanics. A few renegade engineers from the corporate world made the pilgrimage to the best damn garage in town to witness the adiabatic Cummins for themselves. They were stunned. They watched as Smokey ran the engine on a dynamometer at full load for 12 hours straight without the temperature needle ever moving into the red. They saw exhaust gas temperatures that were shockingly low because the heat was being converted into mechanical work instead of being wasted. They knew that if this engine ever reached a production line, it would render every other diesel on the market a museum piece overnight. The corporate reaction was not one of excitement. It was one of absolute panic. The manufacturers realized that Smokey's technology was too effective. It would require a total, multi-billion dollar redesign of their manufacturing plants. It would require them to abandon their existing service contracts and parts infrastructure. Most importantly, it would prove to the American consumer that they had been sold an inferior, inefficient product for decades. They decided that instead of licensing the technology, they would ensure it never saw the light of day. The Industrial Execution 
the sabotage of Smokey's turbo diesel experiment was a calculated, multi-front hit job. It didn't happen with a wrench, it happened in the boardrooms. The major manufacturers began to exert pressure on the specialized suppliers that Smokey relied on for his prototype parts. Suddenly, the high-purity ceramic coatings he used were no longer available for private purchase. The experimental injector nozzles he had developed were hit with patent infringement claims from companies that had never even seen his design. Smokey found himself isolated, cut off from the materials required to finalize a production-ready version of the hot vapor engine. The corporate world was building a legal and logistical wall around the best damn garage in town. They were using their massive legal departments to slow Smokey down, filing injunctions and demanding safety reviews that were designed to do nothing but waste time and money. They were essentially trying to bankrupt the innovator before he could prove the technology to the public. Smokey was a fighter, but he was fighting a ghost, a corporate entity with unlimited resources and a vested interest in his failure. He watched as his diesel project was effectively strangled by a boardroom vote. The hot vapor Cummins was eventually dismantled, its components scattered to prevent anyone from ever recreating the full package. It was a mechanical hit job. The truck makers had killed the threat, and they went back to selling their inefficient machines while the public remained none the wiser. The legacy of Smoky Unix turbo diesel experiment is written in the frustration of every truck owner who has to pay for overpriced fuel and underwhelming performance in a world of restricted, computer-governed engines. The technology that Smokey pioneered in the 80s, variable geometry turbos, ceramic thermal barriers, and high-pressure fuel preheating eventually began to trickle into the industry. But it took 30 years longer than it should have. We are only now reaching the levels of thermal efficiency that Smokey had already mastered in a garage with a dirt floor. He proved that a single mind, focused on the truth of physics, is always faster than a corporate committee. He showed us that the most powerful tool in the world isn't a supercomputer or a multi-million dollar lab. It's the grit of the independent builder. Smokey Eunuch lived his life at wide open throttle and left a legacy that remains the gold standard for every gearhead who refuses to accept the factory. Answer. He was the man who terrified the big three and outthought the entire global diesel industry. We are curating a library of defiance right here. Your next step is to head into our archive and watch the files on the engines that the corporate world thought they had successfully deleted. Keep your hands dirty, keep your mind open, and never forget that the most dangerous thing you can do to the status quo is to pick up a wrench and decide to fix the future yourself. I'll see you in the next deep dive.